In this video, we are going to talk about triggers. In simple words, trigger helps Spark to decide that when to start a new micro batch. Let us understand this with the diagram. We have a Spark streaming application here, which is getting lot of events as I input here. Each dotted line here represents end of a micro batch and start of a new one. So there are three micro batches here. Now, if we have a trigger time of two minutes, then whatever records are received within that two minutes, Spark will create a micro batch of that. So trigger is a signal to Spark streaming that it is a time to create a micro batch. Now there can be three settings for the trigger. First one is default. If you have not set any trigger duration in your job, then Spark will start the next micro batch as soon as the previous micro batch has completed or there is a new data in your source. Next one is fixed interval micro batch. In this case, you will set a fixed interval, say 2 minutes. Spark will create a new micro batch every 2 minutes. If there is no data in your input source, then no new micro batch will be created. Let us see some scenarios of fixed interval. In this diagram, our trigger interval is 2 minutes. Every 2 minutes, a new micro batch is being created. If you do not receive a data in any 2 minute interval, micro batch for that interval will not be created. So here, between 8.4 and 8.6, no new data was received. So, Spark has not created any new micro batch in that. In this scenario, micro batch has taken more than two minutes to complete. Then Spark will wait for running micro batch to complete, and only after that, a new micro batch will be created. In this scenario, your micro batch is completing within the two minutes interval that we have set for trigger. Spark will wait till 8.2 to start the next micro batch. Third scenario is trigger ones. In this case, Spark will read all the data from your input in one shot and process it. And as soon as the data is processed, Spark will shut down the job. This is used by companies where they prefer cloud infra and uh, they will spin up a cluster after a regular interval of time. They try to make sure their cluster is not up for a very long duration and they try to save money. From Spark 2 to 3 onwards, Spark also provides continuous mode. In this mode, if you are running your job, you will see very less latency. This is the preferred mode for having low latency jobs. But there are limitations of this mode. If you are running your job in trigger mode, then Spark will guarantee exactly one semantics. In continuous mode, Spark doesn't support exactly one semantics. Let us understand continuous mode in a bit more detail. To understand continuous mode, we have to understand how micro batch mode in Spark works. If you see this diagram, Spark driver will create new short task on executor whenever a micro batch is created. So there is some latency in creation of micro batch and running of tasks. So the data will be only processed as part of micro batch. This is the scenario in continuous mode. In continuous mode, instead of creating periodic tasks, Spark will create long running tasks that continuously read, process, and write the data. Here, events are processed and written to sync as soon as the new data is available in the source. So, the latency in this scenario is very low. To maintain some level of state and fault tolerance in the execution, Spark injects marker records into input data stream. These are called epoch markers. Gap between two markers is called epoch. When a marker is encountered by a task, Task will report to driver about the last processed record. Driver will store this information in write ahead logs. This is how Spark tries to store checkpoint information in continuous mode so that if there is any failure, Spark can do recovery from that. Let us do a hands on exercise on triggers in next video.